Paula Hammond, and I'm the department head for chemical engineering at MIT. I'm also a professor at the Koch Institute for Integrative Cancer Research at MIT, and I work on polymer materials for biological applications, including biomedical applications. I work on a broad range of applications for biomedicine, and that includes everything from wound healing for large injuries to uh, addressing chronic wounds to bone regeneration, uh, down to vaccination and vaccines through the skin, and the delivery of drugs for cancer and targeted cancer delivery. So we go from the very large scale to the very small scale in our work. There are three main areas of research in my laboratory. They include the use of a very thin layering technique that we use in our lab to generate thin films that can coat a range of different materials for biomedical implants and tissue regeneration. And in that area, we address wound healing and we also address bone regeneration for critical uh, injuries. A second area is the use of our layer-by-layer -layer approach on the nanoparticle scale. In this part of our lab, we develop and design polymer systems that can direct a range of different agents, including nucleic acids, RNA, DNA, and proteins directly to cancer cells. Finally, an additional part of our lab uses the design of new polymer materials to generate hydrogels that can become interesting in the long run for tissue regeneration and the manipulation of cells outside of the body. In the area in which we use nanolayered thin films for biomaterial applications, we're actually taking advantage of the fact that we have a process that uses water as the way in which we can generate these films. In fact, we're using oppositely charged material systems that can be layered one after the other to create a multi-layered thin film that contains multiple drugs. And what's really exciting about that is that we can, with water, introduce proteins without denaturing them. We can also introduce DNA, which is ge the genetic code for our body, into these layer-by-layer -layer films without destroying the function of the DNA. When we're able to do this, we're also able to introduce them at much higher amounts than we would in a normal polymer material. So instead of being uh, forced to dissolve a protein in a regular material system using solvent and heat, degrading the material system while you're doing it, now we can actually take a surface that we want to coat, introduce the protein that should go onto that surface, and in alternation with a degradable polymer in very neutral conditions, build up a film. Because we build up the film one layer at a time, we can introduce different drugs in different layers. This means that we can actually tune how the drug comes out from that surface. This has been extremely powerful for us because we've been able to de develop biomedical implants that can be coated with layers that contain antibiotics that can prevent infection and layers that release proteins that promote the growth of bone around the implant. And we can generate these films which release them in a staggered release profile designed to precisely match what the body needs at the right time. We can actually design these bandages so that we release siRNA that will block a gene that's overexpressed and causes scarring, for example. And this is something we're very interested in applying toward people who have suffered large traumatic wounds or burns. This work is actually supported in part by the Army through the Institute for Soldier Nanotechnologies. So our work has really evolved in our collaboration and uh, in our connection with the Institute for Soldier Nanotechnologies to look at material systems that help heal soldiers that have very large traumatic wounds. We've also used the same technology to introduce hemostasis agents. These are proteins which help stop bleeding. And we can do this using a thin film that rather than releasing over a long period of time, releases over a very rapid period of time, yet can be stored without using the usual kinds of refrigeration and the usual need uh, for uh, short-term storage that we would have to apply to normal proteins. 
So we've developed these hemostasis bandages, which can be applied to a soldier and stop bleeding very rapidly, can be carried by soldiers or supplied by medics very easily. And we're designing them now so that they can give us the release of a range of different things that a wound needs. Not only stop the bleeding, but eliminate any possible infection, and also try to allow the wound to heal more naturally. This isn't in the field right now. In fact, uh, our most exciting development is something that we just published uh, in a research article in the past year. Uh, we've been testing in pigs, and now we have a collaboration with the Army Institute of Surgical Research and a future collaboration with the U.S. Air Force to continue to test these systems and to develop them so that they are even more readily uh, deployed by soldiers.